This is the Pal Kitty V90. I love this thing, but let's see if we can make it even better. Oh, hi there. <laughs> Take the wee beer. That's me. It's my big cozy warm sweater that my mom made me. It's winter, which means cozy sweaters. Uh, do me a favor and click the thumbs up button to, to say thanks to my mom for making me this cozy sweater. Yeah, so this is the Pal Kitty V90, which I'm sure you all already know about. If you don't know about this, then uh, check out my full review video. I do an unboxing, I'll give you my first impressions, show you the firmware, the menus, show you how the games run, all, all that good stuff. There's a link to that video in the description below. In that video, I told you that I've been on the search for the perfect GBA device. Specifically, something that looks and feels like an old-school clamshell GBA. And the Pal Kitty V90 is the only one that fit the bill. It's a great little GBA. It looks like a GBA, it plays GBA games great, and it's only 40 bucks. Well, about playing GBA games great, uh, but most games run great on the V90. But there's a few that don't run great. Uh, same with SNES. There's a few games that aren't really playable on the stock firmware. And of course, PS1 isn't going to perform very well. Which brings me to... Da -da 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 -da! Custom firmware. Uh, that, that's right, we can make this Pal Kitty V90 even better by replacing the basic boring default NX Hope operating system with a new custom firmware image from Biu, Biu, Biu. I'll be installing the 1.3.3 version of their firmware, but why would we do such a thing? Well, for one thing, it's supposed to work better, so I'm expecting some improved performance. It also apparently supports more systems, like Pico 8, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, Game & Watch. I don't care about those to be honest, but I mean, if you do, then it's good news for you. And it's supposed to look a little nicer. It's probably not going to knock our socks off like the Adam image on the Ambler Nick 280V that I made a video on recently. But hey, if it looks a little more snazzy than the stock firmware, eh, then, then I'll be happy. Today I'm going to show you how to install the custom firmware, then we'll give it a good test in some GBA, SNES, and PlayStation games, right after this word from our sponsor. That's right, I have sponsors now. Does that surprise you? Well, it shouldn't. I have over 274 subscribers. I'm basically famous at this point. So yeah, the video today is brought to you by uh, Audiobookable. That's right, Audiobookable. Do you love listening to audiobooks instead of reading real books? No? Well, me neither. Audiobooks are for lazy people who can't read and would rather listen to someone read them a story like a child or a baby. Audiobooks are killing brick and mortar libraries and bookstores and are turning us into a generation of unmotivated, mindless content consumers who need words spoon fed into their ears while they drive to their jobs that they hate to pay for luxuries like subscriptions to Audiobookable. But you might have one reason to sign up. I have a book there. My autobiography, Tech the Weeb, a gay boy forgotten. It's an audiobookable exclusive, narrated by yours truly. Do you want to listen to me read an entire book? If you want that for some reason, act now and use my discount code TechDweeb11. That's Dweeb with one E because they messed up my code. And you can get 11% off an overpriced bi monthly subscription today. Thanks, Audiobookable, for sponsoring the video and also messing up my promo code. Now back to the show. Okay, let's get to the good stuff. Custom firmware for the V90. It's relatively easy to install. I'll give you the quick version of this video, and I'll include a written guide in the video description, along with links to all the stuff you need. I'm also going to link to the Retro Game Corpse article, because Russ has a few extras that might make this even better, like newer versions of a few emulators and a pre-configured set of configs for PS1 games that are supposed to improve performance. I'll definitely be giving those a test. To install the custom firmware, you'll need an SD card. I'm using a 32GB SanDisk microSD card. You don't really want to rely on the cards that come with your device. As I showed in my Amblernik 280V video, they could die. <laughs> they could die pretty easy, and it's very annoying. So just use a good one. You won't need a huge one for your V90. I think a 32GB card will hold everything you would ever want to play on this device. So let's take this and put it into the computer. 
I I'm gonna explain the broad strokes here. For the fine details, definitely check out my notes and the links in the description below. So first you wanna go to the Mayu CFW site and go to the Pound Kitty V9D section. In there you'll find some links to the firmware and several pieces of software. Also head over to the Retro Game Corps guide if you want to get more up-to-date versions of a few emulators and those um, PS1 config files. First, you're gonna format your card with either MIDI tool or SD card formatter. I used SD card formatter. And next, you'll use Win32 Disk Imager to flash the firmware to your new empty SD card. It's gonna ask if you're sure you wanna flash the card, and you say, Yeah, man, I wanna do it. After that, the card will now have the custom firmware on it. If you downloaded the extra emulators and PS1 configs, you'll need to copy them over to the directories that are shown in the guide. Uh, a few BIOS files too if you're doing the extra stuff. It's all there in the guide. I'm, I'm not going to explain all the little stuff. Then you'll just need to copy over your games. If you're doing the PS1 configs thingy, then you'll need to make sure your PS1 ROMs have the exact same name as the config files or else they won't work. Uh, all the info for that's in the readme file for the PS1 configs, just follow that. And uh, again, the links to all this stuff is down in the description below. Uh oh, that's it. It doesn't take long. Took me about 10 minutes. Okay, then let's give this a go, shall we? Hey, look at that. We're greeted by a fancy new Pal Kitty scrolling logo, and now we can check out the firmware. Before we get into some games, let's check out the system. Look at this big, beautiful, full screen menu. There are now some handy shortcuts for like changing the brightness, screenshots, qu quick suspend, uh, shutdown. I'll go through the systems that we have on here. There's definitely lots of new stuff that I'll probably never use. I just want to use this thing to play some NES, some Game Boy, SNES, Sega Genesis, Game Boy Advance, and maybe some PlayStation 1, the, the games it can handle at least. But we'll get into the PS1 stuff in a little bit. Cause that's the main reason I wanted to try out this custom firmware, but we'll do the lower end stuff first. One thing to note is there's actually several emulators for lots of the systems. You can see here for SNES we have SNES 9X4D and also Pocket SDS. So if a game you want to play doesn't work great in a certain emulator, then you could try the other one. So let's start with sub SNES. Most games ran fine on the on the regular <laughs> V90 firmware. So I'm not expecting any drastic changes. Let's try a few of the harder to run games. F-Zero did not run great on the original firmware. You can see here that it's getting about 11 FPS. So let's try it on the BU firmware. We'll start with a SNES 9X4D emulator. Oh, that's better. We're getting like 19 FPS up to 25 FPS. Better, uh, but not a great experience. Okay, let's try the second SNES emulator, Pocket SNES. Wow, that's way better. We're getting like 47 to 50 FPS. This is the European version of the game, so it has a 50 FPS cap. So we're almost at the maximum here. Ah, uh, that's promising. Oh, we'll try Yoshi's Island. This is a game that never works well at lower end hardware. Why does this game require so much horsepower to run properly? It feels like you need a liquid-cooled PC with an RTX graphics card to run this game. Well, here on the default firmware, we're getting uh, uh, about 11 FPS. Not very good. But here on Pocket's Nest, we're getting like high 40s into the low 50s. This isn't the European version of this one, so you know, if I read the European version, it probably would have been locked at 50. And we're pretty close to maximum, and it feels great to play like this. Th not perfect, but you know, really good. And uh, considering this is like the hardest to run SNES game, yeah, you're probably gonna get pretty good performance and everything else on this emulator. So this is a big step up on the custom firmware. <laughs> Another very hard game to run is Star Fox on the original firmware here. Oh, look at that. We're getting like five or six FPS. This is painful. Okay, let's try the Pocket SNES. Oh, that's not good. Uh, we're getting about 30 FPS. It's a big improvement, but you know, this isn't really playable. It may look relatively playable, but it, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't sound good either. 
Anyway, it looks like uh, not every SNES game is going to work perfect. Most of them are going to be totally fine, but, you know, these sort of 3D-ish, you know, high graphics ones, they're going to give you some problems. Uh, let's try some Game Boy Advance, and, uh, you know, most of the Game Boy Advance games ran fine on the original firmware, but one that definitely gave me some problems was this Duke Dukem game for some reason. Yeah, on the original firmware it was utterly unplayable, but on the new firmware we're using GPSP, and it's better. It's not perfect, but it's better. Considering this is like the one game I could get running on basically any device, having an improvement is good. And every other Game Boy Advance game I tested worked perfectly fine. I think you'd have a hard time finding, you know, a significant number of games that didn't work. There might be one or two, but you know, all your favorites will be running perfectly fine for the most part, including Yoshi's Island. For some reason, the Game Boy Advance port of this game just runs pretty much perfect. <laughs> way, way better than the SNES version. And I played a handful of other games. They all worked fine. Played me some Sega Genesis, some Atari 2600, Game Boy, some PC Engine, Final Bird Alpha, Neo Geo, all working as expected. They all worked on the original firmware, but one thing I will say is that I do think the new emulators are really good. They seem to have more options, and I like that we have multiple emulator choices for a few of the systems. I think options is always nice. Okay, on to PS1. This is the main thing I wanted to test. You see, we installed a set of configs for the top 100 PS1 games, and this is supposed to make them as playable as they could be on this device. The configs adjust the clock speeds, the frame, frame skip and stuff. They're basically the best known configurations to get these games running as good as they can. If you want to try these configs, you'll need to check out the info in the description below. It's relatively easy. You just need to copy over some files into the emulator directory and get the right PS1 BIOS files. And one important thing is you need to make sure your ROM files are named the exact same as the configs. Really, you just need to follow the steps of the readme. They, they explain it all there. You gotta do it right or else it's not gonna work, but it's not hard if you follow the, the readme. I did that, so we're gonna test out some PS1, and we'll compare the performance in these games with the performance in the default V9D firmware. Overall, the performance jump for me has been a bit of hit or miss. You can see here on the original firmware, Tony Hawk's 2 is getting like 43 FPS, and on the BU firmware we're getting close to 60. Well, that's a pretty impressive jump, and it played great. I was really enjoying playing it on this device, and it felt good at those higher FPS. But then over Tekken 3, we went from about 48 FPS to like 50 three or so. So just a little bump there. It did feel better though when I wasn't looking really closely at the FPS counter. And, and in Spyro we didn't really see much of a difference at all. Maybe maybe a little. Like maybe up from 50 to 55 or so. I, I'm sure these configs are helping a bit. Just don't expect them to knock your socks off. You know there's still gonna be lots of games that you totally just can't play on this thing. But that doesn't mean that this thing can't handle some PS1. You can definitely play lots of PS1 games that'll run very well on this, and some of the lower end stuff will run basically perfectly. I guess that maybe like 50% of the games will run well, maybe another 25% will be playable, and probably 25% won't be playable. Yeah, sure, you don't have an analog stick, but you can get by with D-pad controls. This is a good PS1 device for the games it plays, and if you load up those configs, you might get a boost in some games. So I actually plan on trying a lot more PS1 on the Pal Kitty V90, and maybe I'll do another V90 PS1 performance test video in the future. Uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see. And before we wrap up, I'll scroll through some of the extra games and apps that are on here. You know, all the, the ports and stuff. There's quite a quite a few more on the Miu custom firmware than on the default V90 firmware. As you can see, there's lots on here you can get into. Doom, Quake, obviously. Rise of the Triad, which have, if you haven't played that, that's a great game. Open Bar, Streets of Rage Remake, Strife, Wolfenstein, you know, all these games from when I was a kid. 
I might actually do a separate video trying out these games too. There are lots of gems in this section that most people probably won't bother with. But from what I've found, they're really playable, really enjoyable. And I know from experience that there are some very good games here that are, are really fun to play even though they're like 20 years old. Well, all in all, I'm relatively happy with how the custom firmware changed the POW Kitty V9D experience. I mean, the SNES emulator didn't make all the unplayable games completely playable, even though it helped. PS1 configs helped a bit, but they didn't blow me away. I think the biggest reason to go with the custom firmware is just to have more options in like, you know, the emulators and multiple emulators to choose from. And also, it looks really good, so it's worth it for that reason alone. Oh, and uh, yeah, there's the extra systems that this adds that I didn't bother testing. So, you know, if you want to play Commodore 64 on your V90, then yeah, this is a no-brainer. So, all in all, it's good. Not great, but still good. And that's good enough. So please let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the Miu firmware? Do you even care about playing PS1 games on a device like this? Is there anything else you want to see me test on the V90? Or any of my handhelds? I'd love to hear from you down there. And while you're down there, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Or the thumbs down if you dislike it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. I'm Tech Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.